I wish somebody had told me this before I started. Hi guys, it's Rachel. Okay, so hear me out. Studying in Canada was everything that I hoped for and more. I got to experience life in a new setting, receive quality education, and also meet a lot of people from different walks of life. I would not have had it any other way, even though at times it got difficult. I think that's the key word here. While I have no regrets about coming to Canada, there were lessons that I had to learn the hard way. And I wish somebody had told me about this before I even started. So I'll tell you now. Here are the things that I never told you about being an international student. Yes, it's going to get a bit deep and personal here as I will be sharing my experiences on the five stages of studying abroad. But I hope that at the end of this, you'll gain valuable insights as I do want you to be mentally prepared to handle the challenges once you get here. And with that, let's begin. Let's start the first point strong, homesickness. Oh man, like I vividly recall that day when I was being dropped off at the airport in Manila. You know, like normal people when saying goodbye to their family and friends would be crying or like hugging it out. Not me. If I'm being completely honest, I was actually more excited than sad to leave. Look, I've never been to Canada. I've only seen it from photos or videos from YouTube. I've traveled for like a couple weeks, but I never imagined moving my entire life in a different country and staying there for months, even years. And guys, this is my first time traveling solo. And so the idea of being able to do that at 23 years old was like amazing. And I was just itching to get my life started and enjoy the ride. Basically, I didn't really have time to process my emotions as I was just eager to begin my life in a new country. But after a couple weeks in Canada, you know, the dust settled, the excitement wore off and that's when it hit me. It was at that moment that I realized, oh shit, I'm actually in a new country and I'm thousands of miles away from my family and it will take me some time to see them again. And the weather wasn't cooperating either since I came to Vancouver during the fall season. And during the season, the days are shorter, the nights are colder and the weather just becomes more and more depressing. I was living with relatives too, which has some challenges on its own. Generally, I just haven't been away from family too long, and that contributed to me feeling homesick. I mean, I've been living in Canada for almost four years now, and I still get that feeling every now and then. I was looking for familiarity, such as my mom's cooking, or like barging into my sister's room to grab their charger, or just annoy them. Um, even farting in front of my family members, I know that they don't care, or like maybe they do, but I don't care. And that's the thing, like I miss that level of comfort. And that brings me to the second stage, because when I moved here, I had to make a lot of adjustments. Adjustments. When you make a decision like this, it's expected that you would have to make some sort of adjustments. There are minor adjustments, and there are major adjustments. And I would say that this falls into the high end of the spectrum. I mean, just picture this. You've been practicing swimming in the kiddie pool all your life, and suddenly, you're thrown into the deep end of the pool. Yeah, that's how it feels like. I felt like when I got here, I had to figure a lot of things out on my own. Simple tasks like cooking, cleaning, commuting, and even socializing were a bit more complicated to do here because I had to factor in, uh, one, my ability to do it, the time it takes, and how much it's going to cost me. For example, on an average day, I had to calculate the time that I woke up to prepare breakfast, to get dressed for school, to walk or even run to the bus stop so I can get to my classes on time, and afterwards attend to my part-time job and later in the evening attend to my assignments. In short, I was more conscious here and that made me realize all the things that I took for granted back home. Damn. Now in the process of adjusting, the transition made me feel like I was in a no man's land. In this weird space of not being here nor there, it felt lonely. I felt for the majority of the time I spent here, that I was my own friend, my own support system, and own cheerleader. Of course, like, before this guy arrived. And it was so hard to explain this concept to my family back home, and even my Canadian family, as none of them experienced what I went through. 
Plus, I didn't want them to worry about me either, so I rarely opened up to them about my feelings. And another thing to compound to this loneliness was that it was just so difficult to make friends here. People just go about their own daily lives, which, like, mad respect. Like, people here are just so hardworking and they're so in tune with their own personal goals that, you know, to insert myself and my problems into the equation, like, I just, I just didn't think that it would be worth their time. So what ended up happening was just me bopping to my own beat, kind of accepting the situation the way it is, and just, you know, trying to keep busy. I dissociated myself from the problem, thinking that that would be a good solution, but I ended up creating a problem for myself, which is pressure. In general, we all face some sort of pressures in life. In the POV of the student, there's going to class, doing well on our exams, so we can eventually graduate and make mom and dad proud. But there's a unique added pressure for international students, which is immigration. Unlike domestic students, international students have to find a job right away after they graduate. And not just any regular job, but it has to be a skilled job. Moreover, they have to work that skilled job for at least one year before they can qualify for the Express Entry program. But qualifying is just one factor of the equation. The other major challenge is actually obtaining a high enough CRS score so that you can be selected for PR. Because take note guys, Express Entry is an invite-only type of PR program. This is a daunting task that we international students will have to face eventually. And that builds a lot of internal pressure because of course we want to make our parents proud. Of course we want them to get a return on their investment, which is getting permanent residency. Like all my life before getting PR, I felt like I was in a marathon, constantly running, constantly chasing for the next best thing in my life. And this constant pressure to do better led me to feel perpetually anxious. I felt tense all the time, worried about the outcome, because I feared disappointing myself and everybody else. I had so many questions in each step of the journey. What if I failed my subjects? What if I don't get enough work hours to pay my monthly expenses? Will I get a skilled job with no work experience? What if my CRS score is not high enough? And if I don't get PR, what happens next? My anxiety reached peak level when my postgrad work permit expired and I eventually had to stay in Canada on a visitor visa. And that for me sucked because that was my demotion in life. I felt like I let myself and everybody else down. I felt defeated. And like, nobody talks about this, you know? Because as an international student, do you even have the bandwidth to talk about your feelings when you're caught up with your full-time studies, part-time job, and just life in general? And I think part of the reason why we don't talk about it is the social stigma around admitting hardship. My worst fear is getting comments like, well, Rach, how hard could life be if you're already in Canada? Like if I say I'm having a hard time, it might be interpreted as being a whiner or a crybaby or that I'm ungrateful to be where I am. But it's not that. And I realize this slowly but it's okay to be in tune with your thoughts and feelings. It's okay to talk about it. And it's especially okay to admit that you need help. So let's bring this back into a more positive tone, wherein I'll be sharing the three things that I've learned going through the process. One, I believe that acknowledging the problem is the first step in finding a solution. This is in reference to the concept of Kidman's Law, in that if you are able to write down the problem clearly, then you're halfway to solving the problem. Two, take things day by day. The future is just too hard to predict or control. We can exhaust all our efforts planning for the future, but our energy is better spent in accomplishing the things that we need to do now, because progress is made up of small achievements. Lastly, you're stronger than you think. The fact that you already thought about coming to Canada and that you're welcoming this drastic change in your life already tells me you're mentally strong. That when you get here, your experiences will only make you stronger. So have a little faith in yourself as you are more than capable to handle life's challenges. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. I hope that you gained something valuable and I hope that you can take this with you along your journey. If you made it this far, 
thank you for hearing me out and I wish you all the best. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Be safe and be kind. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.